everybody, I'm back this week to do that casserole I talked about. We are going to do an updated awesome version of a tuna casserole. We're going to make it so creamy and good, you were just guys are just going to love it. So, we we'll start out with the mixing bowl. Doesn't need to be microwavable, but we will need microwavable casserole dish. Doesn't need a lid. So, we're just going to start out by putting in our mixing bowl a 10 ounce package of it's a uh, chopped spinach. Now you can use broccoli or kale, spinach, whatever. You just want some sort of nice green. Um, if you get it frozen, uh, just remember to thaw it and drain it. Fresh, just make sure to chop it up. But you'll need a 10 ounces of it. So go ahead and get that put in there. Let me find my spoon so I can get all the spinachy goodness out. Once we have our 10 ounces of spinach in there, we're going to head for a can of cream of onion soup. Different, huh? I had never used this before, but it's a 10 and a half ounce can of Campbell's. Great for cooking cream of onion soup. emergency run to the grocery store this morning to get this because when I went to Walmart last night they were out. Imagine Walmart being out of something in the grocery store having it. Okay, so once you have your cream of onion soup in, we're going to head for our tuna. Now, the tuna here, what I like to do, your recipe will call for like 12 ounces. So you know you go to the store, you get a 12 ounce can. Well, it's such a lie because when you drain it like you have to do, um, you only get about 9 ounces. So what I do for my casserole is I get a 12 ounce can and a little five ounce, the normal size 5 ounce can. I drain the both, plop them both in there, well you'll need your spoon, but, and that will help you get the proper amount of tuna into your casserole. Just a little nice little cheat code there for you. Tuna. Okay. Now we're going to head for two, well you can stir up two. We're going to head for two teaspoons of uh, brown mustard. I have a spicy brown mustard. I just like that because it gives it a little bit of an extra kick. Okay, broccoli, well, I, my recipe says broccoli, but I go for spinach. My green, my tuna, my cream of onion. Okay, oh, I forgot over here. Just a fun, a nice little touch to make it nice and creamy. A little five ounce can of evaporated milk. Gives it a good flavor. Carefully stir that in, because we don't want to be making a splooshy mess. Okay, now we need our pasta. You're going to start out with 7 ounces of dried pasta, and um, you're going to pre-cook that, or 8 ounces, sorry. You're going to start out with a cup of dried pasta, and you're going to pre-cook that, which I did using my awesomely handy-dandy microwave rice cooker, which also does pasta. It wants to stay on. And you can see it fluffs up nice. I pre-did that so you guys didn't have to sit here for 10 minutes while I did my pasta. But we just go ahead and dump that all in our casserole. You can use any kind of pasta you want. Your traditional is your elbow pasta. I found at the store these small egg bows. I thought they were fun. I like to make it fun. Even a yummy casserole like this can get boring if you do it the same old way every time. Okay, so our last little touch here before we go into our casserole dish is your classic french fried onions. Nice little three ounce bag. But I like to crunch mine up a little bit. I'm going to pour half of the bag 
into our casserole. And then we're going to save half the bag for sprinkling over at the end. So once you have that all stirred together, side my cooker there, we're going to take our casserole dish, your standard two and a half, three ounce casserole dish, give it a good spray with cooking spray, and we're going to transfer our casserole. Give it a good shake and smooth. Okay, once you have that fairly even, we're going to pop it in the microwave for three minutes to start with. You do it three minutes, stir it, do it another three minutes, and um, after the total of six minutes. We'll spread the rest of our crispy onions on and then do it for two minutes to finish it off. So, after this you can just sort of start to clean up after yourself. Put away my cooking spray. watching something on TV, some sort of cool show. But, um, oh, hey guys, if you like my shirt this week, this was an awesome grab bag win from Shirt Punch. Um, I saw the cats chasing a cord again, <laughs> jumping up in the air. Um, I have a shirt coming from Shirt Punch, and you'll see it in a week or two. And on Shirt Punch, you get the awesome option to toss in an extra grab bag shirt or two for just a couple bucks. It's not that expensive. I just thought, I can go out grab eggs and all, so I thought, what? Why not? Mega win! Monty Python, how cool is that? Um, okay. Yeah. But you're probably about to see my dad here in a few minutes because he walks through the kitchen while I'm filming my videos. <laughs> okay, in about 20 seconds here, we are going to stir it for the first time. The <laughs> cat stole your seat. Also tends to steal seats. So go ahead and get the casserole out. Give it a good stir. Make sure you're getting the cook evenly. Doesn't need to be very long. Just go both stirs. Smooth it back out, and we're gonna do it for the final three minutes before we top it with the onions of course
sorry if I'm starting around. I'm to, I like to wash up my uh, microwave rice cooker slash pasta cooker. Pretty much as soon as I'm done using it, so I don't have to run it through the dishwasher. I like to scrub it in the sink. Telling you though, that is if I could tell you to get one microwave kitchen tool, microwave tool, would so be one of these things. It doesn't even matter what brand it is, you can get them anywhere, and they're super cheap. But it's it cooks rice, pasta, vegetables. I mean, it can do all kinds of stuff. It was only like 10 bucks. I mean, yeah, it still might take you. 10 to 12 minutes to do your pasta, but you don't have to boil the water first and you're just on it in the microwave. Okay, we've got about a minute and a half left and then we'll put the rest of our french fried onions on top. If you have resisted the urge to eat them, I love these things. Mom has to beat me away from them at Thanksgiving time because I'm always trying to steal them off the uh, green bean casserole. As per usual, my little co-star causing trouble. I don't recommend holding, handling your pets while you're cooking, but as the fact that I'm just cooking for myself, I know, I shouldn't, but I still do. Because she's so sweet. about 30 seconds left and then we will talk with our french fried onions. And then, you know, we'll talk, pop it in for two more minutes. If, um, after the sec last two minutes you haven't, if you would like to test it and it's still a little cool, just toss it in for another minute. Now you would clean your hands if you had been doing that and cooking for somebody else. Okay, go ahead and we're going to get this out. You can see it's starting to pretty well done. You can see it's pretty cooked along the edges. I'm just giving it a good stir, smoothing it down one last time. Smells really good. I wish you guys could smell this. Well, you're gonna smell it when you're doing your own. But okay, smooth it back down. Get your French fried onions. I just give that a good even shake over the top. Can't see on it because I put her down. Okay. Like I said, pop this in for two more minutes and you should be completely done. It's going to look like that, only crisped up a little bit. Yeah, um, this recipe is crazy fun and you only put, a little tip for even this one and other ones, you don't put, if you have any kind of topping, crumble, french fried onions, whatever, you don't put it in till the end, on top until the end, or for like the last minute or two. Because if you do it any longer than that, you're going to end up with a soggy topping, and you want a crispy topping, that's why we get the French fried onions. You just have a little plater bowl. Um, this really is family size. It could probably feed four or five people. I'm so excited because it tastes so good. This is the cute little, I don't think I've ever used this. I mean, I know my microwave cooker can do uh, vegetables, 
And this is, would be the little steamer basket you would use inside your cooker if you did vegetables. I really don't think I've ever used it. I've done so much rice and pasta in it though. might have been curious to see what I've been doing as a big project this week. I've been doing more of my custom chocolates. I did these little Raggedy Andy. It's for um, my friend Allie's baby shower. Nineteen seconds and we are gonna have our supper. Or lunch. Door leftovers. Hey, it makes all kinds. Of course, there's always tap the edges of your casserole dish to make sure you don't need hot pads or something because I don't want to burn yourself. Okay. Mmm. French fry eat goodness. But yep, that, you just made a tuna casserole in the microwave in under 20 minutes. I mean, how easy and quick of a lunch can you get and still have it be pretty healthy. Take a little bit from the corner here because I uh, want to take a good picture of it then. Mm. Still kind of hot. Which means you know it's cooked the whole way through. But it is so good. You've got your tuna, your onion, your pasta, your cream. Oh, I love hot. <laughs> well, I'm gonna let this cool. I'm gonna go have my lunch. You guys try this. Share me with your friends. Meet me at Ren Fair in a month. Little plug for the Geek Girl Project. We're getting together at the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair on September 19th for Time Travelers Weekend. So it'd be really cool if you guys could come. And uh, thank you, and meet me next week where I'm not sure what we'll do.